Alright, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to another Roblox tutorial. Now last time I believe I taught you guys how to create a data store and how to use them to your full advantage. Now, uh, yes, I did skip last week's tutorial and I'm sorry about that. Unexpected events happened and I had to go ahead and spend time with my family. So anyways, we're here, we're with the tutorial, and on my Twitter you guys chose for a custom health bar. Which is pretty amazing because that's what I've been wanting to do for a while. If you have no idea how people choose this, go ahead and hop on my Twitter. And if you see a poll uh, asking what my next tutorial should be, go ahead and vote because it kind of helps out and kind of says, okay, you want you want more tutorials and you guys want to learn. And that's good. That's kind of what I want to do. So anyways, uh, here we are in our Lua tutorial world. And uh, we can go ahead and actually get started. I have no idea what this chef hat is here. But anyways, we can go ahead and get started by implementing our first uh, our first part of this lesson or tutorial, which is inserting a screen GUI, and we're going to go ahead and name this main. And you can name this whatever you want. I just, I'm choosing to name it main. And then you guys can insert a frame, and I'm going to go ahead and name this health, uh, health bar. And we're going to go ahead and uh, you guys can choose whatever size you want it. I'm going to choose a 0.15 and maybe a 0 0.03 or 0 0.25. 0 0.25 looks good. Uh, get rid of the border size pixel. And then we can continue by duplicating this, putting that inside, making the size one by one so it fills the whole thing. Num uh, we're going to put the zigzag on 2 so it's always covering, and we're going to name this Overlay. And we're going to go ahead and change the color to a nice kind of looking color. So that looks good. That's a good color. So there we go. Now we're going to go ahead and insert a local script into the health bar. So we can go ahead and uh, get this all settled up. And as I, yeah, as you guys can see, I changed my uh, color scheme once again. I think this is my final color scheme because I really like it at the moment. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and name this uh, Health Overlay uh, Overlay Module. There we go. It's not really a module script, but I like calling it a module just because it, uh, it kind of sounds nice and it actually is kind of like a module. It's something that you kind of connect onto. Uh, anyways, here we go. So we're going to go ahead and make actually a print statement. I shouldn't have gone rid of that. We're going to make a print statement saying uh, health overlay launched. And then we're going to and we're going to uh, above this, we're going to go ahead and make this wait a second before launching. And then we're going to go ahead and set up our local variables. So we're going to go ahead and do static variables. And we're going to go ahead and do local player equals game dot players dot local player. Local character equals player dot character. And local hum equals character dot humanoid. And we're going to go ahead and put a comment here saying hum equal equal to humanoid. And actually... We'll just go ahead and do is equal to humanoid. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and add a few more. We're going to go ahead and put local over is equal to script. Whoops. Dot parent dot overlay. And local under, and it's not under tail, just under uh, script dot parent. There we go. So we have over, under, and uh, accidentally put insert there. So we have uh, the, our player, the character, our humanoid, our overlay, and our underlay. Now we're going to go ahead and actually get to the actual scripting. So we're going to go ahead and do update void. We're going to go ahead and put that there. And uh, if I am calling these something different, that's because I've been programming in C++ recently. Uh, C++ and C sharp and their uh, voids and static variables. That's kind of what I call them. So uh, it's it's whatever you like to call them. I kind of like calling the function voids because I've been used to C sharp a lot. 
So anyways, here we go. So we're going to create a function, and we're going to go ahead and do uh, not, jeez, I can't even stay on track here. So function update, and we're going to go ahead and make a few spaces there, and let's go ahead and get started. So local HP will be equal to how many health, how much, not how many, how much health the player has. So hum.health divided by hum.maxhealth. So there we go. Pretty good, huh? Now we're going to go ahead and do, um, and we don't need to actually set a new variable or new, uh, yeah, static variable or a variable for our overlay because we already have that. So we don't need to do that. So we're going to go ahead and do over dot size uh, equals udim to dot new. And here we're going to go ahead and do hp. 0, 1, 0, and not HP as in the computer, HP as in health points. Uh, anyways, so here we go. So let me explain what's going on here. Uh, let's say we have like 50 health. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to type this in. I don't know if you guys can see the console here or not. You guys that can actually probably see the console. Yeah, you guys can. Uh, just checking. So if I go ahead and just increase this a bit. And if I go ahead and put uh, 50 divided by 100, oh, whoops, actually, I forgot, print 50 divided by, oh, uh, Jesus, uh, here we go, print 50 divided by 100, which is 0 0.5. Now, um, if we go ahead and actually do, like, let's say you had 75 health left out of 100, you, that would be 0 0.75. So here, uh, right now, the max health is usually 100. And here, it's uh, since it's always a decimal, like if we actually go back here, and if we look here, it's going to go ahead and let's go ahead and put the output back down to like that size. Uh, if we go ahead and do 0.75, if our health was at 75 health, it would be here. So uh, that's how it would work. Anyways, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to set um, the bar to the same thing once again. So, here we go. Uh, there we go. And we're going to go ahead. And we, it d depends what you want to do. Uh, like, let's say, uh, you know what? We could add, hmm. I, we could possibly add something if we wanted to. But for now, this is uh, pretty much it for what we need. So, beautiful. That is perfect. So there we go, and now all we have to do is call the update function, and then we're going to have to call it every time uh, the humanoid changes. So we're going to go ahead and do hum.changed uh, connect, and we're not going to do connect function, we're just going to do update, and we're going to get rid of those. You don't really need those. Uh, because unlike when you call a regular function, the connect is basically if you put anything in here, like a function, there's nothing you really need to put. But if you're just calling a already made function, like if you're making a function with the connect, you have to insert uh, you have to insert these because that will state variables that you could use. But this one's just a simple function pre-made function, so we don't really need to uh, assign those unless we actually have variables, which we don't in this case. So if we go ahead and press play and wait one, there we go, health overlay launched. And as you can see, uh, we have our bricks here, like once again. So I'm actually going to go back here really quick, disable all these. And there we go, and we can go ahead and press play. So here we are, welcome to our game. So if we go ahead and, uh, if we, yeah, sorry. If we go ahead and go into player one and humanoid, and we changed uh, health to like 50, it would change down. Now, as you see, it's increasing. Now, what we want to do is, uh, here we go. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to do, instead of this, we're going to want to do tween. And actually, we can go ahead and do that. Uh, tween, I believe it's tween size I'm just gonna really quick do this uh, script dot parent dot overlay 
tween size. Yeah, I was correct. Okay. So we can go ahead and get rid of those. Uh, you just always kind of want to make sure that you're right in uh, cases. So here we go. UDIM2 dot new and now we're going to do the exact same thing uh, zero one zero now uh, let me explain what tween size does basically it will uh, it will make the GUI uh, or frame sorry frame or anything that can change in size of a GUI uh, will make it smoothly uh, go to your the position you want to change it to now we're going to go ahead and let's say, let's see, so it's going to go in. So we want it to kind of go in and we want this to be linear and we want this to take at least like 0 0.1 or, uh, yeah, 0 0.1 or, you know what, we'll go ahead and make it do whatever it wants to do. So anyways, we do play. As you see, nothing happened yet. Now what happens if we go in here and do humanoid and we change this to 50? Well, as you can see, it does that, which is pretty cool, huh? And if we go ahead and change this to 20, it... Well, I actually changed that to 100. Oh, there we go. So, here you go. So, yeah, it kind of waits a little bit. But that's fine, because we can go ahead and actually set a time for this. Where maybe, maybe we want it to take up to 0 0.1, and we make it wait 0 0.1 after... Now if we go ahead and press play on this, we join in, we wait for it to load, perfect, it loads, player 1, humanoid, and let's say we want it to go to 20. There we go, it goes to 20, 40, oh whoops, I don't think it's saved, there we go, now it goes to 40, 60, 80, oh and I set it to 100 apparently. Uh, here we go. Yeah, six. So if we like to change it to 50, maybe we want to set it to 60. Whoops, 60. Thank you. Uh, maybe we want to go to eight. Okay, whatever. doesn't matter. It goes down uh, when we want it to go down. So that's pretty neat, isn't it? So now we have that. Uh, that's pretty much our tutorial for today. Uh, nothing else we can really do. If you want to, uh, oh, so if you want to go ahead and we can move this to our the desired area we want it to go to, so maybe we want it to go to like four three, which actually looks pretty good, and we want it to go at like nine five. Now, when we join the game, it will appear here, and we can go ahead and remove the health bar if we wanted to, and the health bar isn't actually that hard to remove. It's actually quite easy. So all we really have to do to remove the health bar is actually go here and uh, what we're going to do is remove void or whatever you would like to call it. Remember, I don't really do a lot. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do game and get service. And actually, this isn't going to be a void. This is just going to be a command. And we're going to go ahead and get the service starter GUI. And let's go ahead and put that in quotes, make it look nicer. And here we're going to go ahead and do set core GUI enabled. And we're going to do enum.core GUI type dot health. And we're going to set that to false. So now we're not going to be seeing that ever again. So, that's actually about it. Um, if you guys enjoyed this tutorial, then go ahead and leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more of these tutorials. Because it kind of means a lot to me that you guys subscribe because it means I'm getting support for what I do for you. Uh, anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed this, go, then go ahead and leave a like. And this helped you all at all. Go ahead and leave a like. And comment down below if you have any problems or do you, or you want to uh, recommend a new tutorial to me. Anyways, thank you guys for all the support. Thank you guys. I love you all. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.